replay viewers, welcome live viewers. My name is Janice. Let me turn this around real quick. Hi, I'm Janice Temple and I'm the founder. Hi, So Amazing 30, welcome. Thanks for joining. Good morning, good morning, how are you doing? Hey, Bee Beauty, how are you? How's everything going? Thanks for joining, ladies. Hi, Finishing Touch, welcome, welcome. Hi, Afroscope TV, welcome. So glad you guys can make it, appreciate it. You're doing well? I'm doing good. Hello, Finishing Touch. Hi, Janice. Hi, Kichi. Hi, Ask Marilyn, come on in. Welcome, please share this out. I appreciate you ladies joining. Hello, beauty. <laughs> Af Afroscope says to be beauty. How are you ladies doing? So please share this out. I, I appreciate you all being here. Thanks for sharing, Kichi. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Afroscope TV invited followers. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So if you're new to me, hi. ARH0, welcome. Thanks for sharing, B Beauty. Thank you. So amazing. Thanks for sharing. So amazing, 30. Thanks for sharing. So if you're, hi, Joe Coase. Welcome, Joe Coase. So my name is Janice Temple, and I'm the founder of World Black History on Periscope. If you're new to me, Hey, how are you doing, Joe? Where are you joining from? What part of the world? Please um, follow me. You just click the little Perry guy in the right-hand corner over there and uh, click on profile and follow me and follow World Black History on Periscope. And today, um, I'm going a little bit off topic. It is Women's History Month, but Originally Boston, now Texas. Okay, well you've moved to warmer climate. Good for you, that sounds great. So you're, so you're originally from Boston. So today I'm gonna to be talking about Michael Moore. Yes, indeed, I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't blame you. So Texas has beautiful weather, beautiful country down there. And hi ladies, so, so, soja, so Deja. So maybe that's the way it is. Welcome, welcome. So what part of the world are you joining from? Please follow me. Click on the little Perry dude to the right and follow us. Hi, hi, Roz. That was a great scope with Mae Jemison. Thanks for doing that. Um, so I'm going to turn this around and get to So are you guys soldier? Yes. Okay, you're in Kentucky. Awesome. It was a pleasure to meet you. So are you guys familiar with, you learned so much? Yes, it was very interesting. So are you guys familiar with the Flint water crisis? And uh, Michael Moore, he's a film producer. So who, who's heard about the Flint water crisis? So I'm going, uh-oh, <laughs> yes and no? How unfortunate, okay, so in Flint, they have poisoned the water, poisoned the town, and poisoned the people. Indeed, not far from them. Oh, really? Yes, the town has essentially been poisoned. It has. Hey, Cece, how are you doing? Very inhumane. It is, and it's crazy. So I was just reading the update today, and it says, news of the poisoned water crisis in Flint has reached a wide audience around the world. The basics are now known. The Republican governor, Hey, CC, Rick Snyder nullified the free elections in Flint. He nullified the free elections in Flint, deposed the mayor and the city council, then appointed his own man to run the city. To save money, they decided to unhook the people of Flint from their fresh drinking water source, Lake Huron, and instead make the public drink from the toxic Flint River. When the governor discovered just how toxic the water was, they decided to keep quiet about it and cover up the extent of the damage being done to Flint's residents. Most notably, yes, unplug. 
most notably the lead affecting the children, causing irreversible and permanent brain damage. Irreversible and permanent brain damage. This is what the governor has done to the children. Yes, he did know. Yes, Marilyn, how are you? And, and it's crazy. It's, it, this is the most craziest thing ever. And Michael Moore is a filmmaker who has influence. So citizen activists uncovered these actions and the governor is now facing growing cries to resign or be arrested. And we need to lend our voices to this cause. So I'm calling on everybody. This is actually a petition to be signed. So these are facts about the petition. Here are 10 things that you probably didn't know about the crisis because the media, having come to the story so late, can only process so much. But if you live in Flint or the state of Michigan, as I do, you know all well that the greater public has only told the, been told the scr surface, scratches of the surface. We do need to do something. Who was the mayor getting paid from to do that? Probably by um, lobbyists, I would suppose. It was done for money. So I will read on. Um, while the children in Flint were given poison water to drink, General Motors was given a special hookup to clean water. A few months after Governor Snyder removed Flint from the clean, fresh water we had been drinking for decades, the brass from General Motors went to him and complained that Flint water was causing their car parts to corrode when being washed on the assembly line. The governor was appalled to hear that GM property was being damaged, so he jumped through a number of hoops and quietly spent $440,000 to hook GM back up to Lake Huron water while keeping the rest of Flint on Flint River water, which means that while the children in Flint were drinking lead-filled water, there was one and only one address in Flint that got clean water, the GM factory, the GM factory. So they're saying that children that have lead poisoning are basically special ed. They, they will not be able to live to their full attempt, potential as an adult. Lead poisoning reduces their, their con how could it happen? Because the governor, the governor got rid of the mayor and the city council. He, he has the power to choose to get rid of the government, the local government, in Flint. So he deposed the mayor and the city council and appointed his own man to run the city and then he unhooked the water source. That's what the governor did. And so Michael Moore is calling upon him to be arrested and he should be because he has affected thousands of children's physical, mental development. They will not be functioning children. They will not be functioning adults. They are going to have, um, it, it reduces their, we need all need to get water tested in our homes. That's true, your head is aching right now, oh no. Yeah, I, I agree with you. For just $100 a day, the crisis could have been prevented. Federal law requires that water systems, which are sent through lead pipes, must contain additives that seals the lead into the pipe and prevents it from leaching into the water. Someone at the beginning suggested to the governor that they add this anti-corrosive element to the water coming out of Flint River. How much would that cost came the same question? A hundred dollars a day for three months. Yes, they do have to pay their water deal, bills was the answer. I guess that was too much. So in order to save $9,000, the government said, F it. And as a result, the state may now end up having to pay upwards of $1.5 billion to fix the mess. Three, there's more than lead in Flint's water. In addition to exposing every child in the city of Flint to lead poisoning on a daily basis, there appears to be a number of other diseases we may be hearing about in the months ahead. 
The number of cases in Flint of Legionnaire's disease has increased tenfold since the switch to the river water. 87 people have come down with it and at least 10 have died. In the five years before the river water, not a single person in Flint had died of Legionnaire's disease. Doctors are now discovering that another half dozen toxins are being found in the blood of Flint citizens, causing concern that there are other health catastrophes which may soon come to light. Of course, the educational and cognitive de deficits are incalculable. Well, okay, so my daughter um, studies uh, public health at Harvard, and she said if they, if they were at 100, which is normal, they, after lead poisoning, they're going to be at 80. That, that's their cognitive development, which makes them non-functioning adults. They will not be functioning adults. That's what's going to happen to these children. People, number four, people's homes in Flint are now worth nothing because they cannot be sold. Would you buy a house in Flint right now? Who would? So every homeowner in Flint is stuck with a house that's now worth nothing. That's a total home value of $2.4 billion down the economic drain. People in Flint, one of the poorest cities in the United States, don't have much to their name. And as for their only asset, it's their home. So in addition to being poisoned, they now have a net worth of zero. And as for employment, who is going to move jobs or start a company in Flint under these conditions? No one. Has Flint future been just flushed down the river? Absolutely. Thanks for sharing, Danya. And number five, while they were being poisoned, they were also being bombed. Here's a story which has received little or no coverage outside of Flint. During two years of water contamination, residents in Flint had to contend with a decision made by the Pentagon to use Flint for target practice. Literally, actually unannounced military exercises complete with live ammo and explosives were conducted last year inside the city of Flint. The Army decided to practice urban warfare on Flint, making use of thousands of abandoned homes which they could drop bombs on. Streets with dilapidated homes had rocket-propelled grenades fired upon them. For weeks, an undisclosed number of Army troops pretended Flint was bad Baghdad or Damascus and basically had at it. It sounded as if the city was under attack from an invading army or from terrorists. People were shocked this could be going on in their neighborhoods. Wait, did I say people? I mean Flint people. As with the governor, it was okay to abuse a community that held no political power or money to fight back. Boom. Isn't that crazy? So even the government is, is I know, I couldn't believe it when I read this. I was like, target practice on, on a community of poor people? And it's basically um, African Americans. The, the community is basically made up of a large number of African Americans. There's a reason for this. They want gone. Yeah, I would guess. I mean, they're poisoning people. This is genocide. That's definitely what this is. So number six, it sounds like bad science fiction, but unfortunately, it's reality. This is America, and this, this is what's happening. So they're poisoning children. They're using a town for target practice. Yeah. The wife of the governor, governor's chief of staff, is a spokeswoman for Nestle's, Michigan largest owner of private water reserves. As Deep Throat told Woodard and Bernstein, follow the money. Snyder's chief of staff throughout the two years of Flint's poisoning, Dennis Muchmore, was intimately involved in all the decisions regarding Flint. His wife is Deb Muchmore, who happens just to be the spokesperson in Michigan for the Nestle Company, the largest owner of private water sources in the state of Michigan. Good coverage. Thank you. 
So Nestle has repeatedly sued in North Michigan for 200 gallons of fresh water per minute. It sucks out from the grounds and bottles for sale as their Ice Mountain brand of bottled water, Ice Mountain. The much mores have a personal interest and in seeing to it that Nestle grabs as much as of Michigan's clean water as possible, especially when cities like Flint in the future are going to need that ice mountain. So isn't that something? So they want to sell more water and they want larger portion of the reserves. So that's where the other interest is going. So it's, it's General Motors and it is Nestle's. So those are two huge lobbyist groups. And then number seven, in Michigan, from Flint water to crime and murder to GM ignition switches, it's a culture of death. It's not just the water that was rec recklessly used to put people's lives in jeopardy. There are many things that happen in Flint that would give one the impression that there is a low value placed on human life. Flint has the worst murder and crime rates in the country. Just for context, if New York City had the same murder rate as Flint, Michigan, the number of people murdered last year in New York would have been almost 4,000 people instead of the actual 340 who were killed in New York City in 2015. But it's not just street, it's not just street crime that makes one wonder about what is going on in Michigan. Last year, it was revealed once again, one of Detroit's automakers had put profit ahead of people's lives. General Motors learned that it had installed faulty ignition switches in many of its cars. Instead of fixing the problem, mid-management staff covered it up from the public. The auto industry has a history of weighing the cost of whether it's cheaper to spend money to fix defects in millions of cars or to simply pay off a bunch of lawsuits filed by the victim's surviving family members. Does a cynical, arrogant culture like this make it easy for a former corporate CEO, now governor, turned a blind eye to lead that is discovered in a municipality's drinking water? Corporate genocide supported by the government makes me sick. Yes, I agree with you, I do. Don't call it Detroit water. It's the largest source of fresh drinking water in the world. Number eight, the media keeps saying Flint was using Detroit's water. It is only filtered and treated at Detroit water plant. The water itself comes from Lake Huron, the third largest body of fresh water in the world. It is a glacial lake formed over 10,000 years ago during the last ice age and it is still fed by pure underground springs. Flint is geographically the last place on earth where one should be drinking poisoned water. So they are by the water and it's being diverted. They are not being given the water, the fresh drinking water. Number nine, all the children have been exposed as all the adults, including me. That's just a fact. If you have been in Flint, from any time from April 2014 to today, and you drank the water, eaten food cooked with it, washed your clothes in it, taken a shower, brushed your teeth, eaten vegetables from someone's garden, you've been exposed to and ingested its toxins. When the media says that 9,000 children under age six have been exposed, that means all the children have been exposed because the number of people under the age of six in Flint is 9,000. The media should just say all. When they say 47 children have tested positive, that's just those who drank the water in the last week or so. Lead enters the body and does its damage to the brain immediately. It doesn't stay in the bloodstream for longer than a few days and you can't detect it after a month. So when you hear 47 children, that's just those with an exposure in the last 48 hour. It is really everyone. So everybody in Flint has lead poisoning and it's more than 9,000 children, more than 9,000 because they're only counting those under age six. 
What about all the children that are over age six? They're, I mean, the media is really misleading what's going on. So number 10, like so many things these days, so the rich could get a big tax break. When Governor Snyder took office in 2011, one of the first things he did was to get a multi-billion dollar tax break passed by the Republican legislature for the wealthy and for corporations. But with less tax revenues, that meant he had to start cutting costs. So many things, schools, pensions, welfare, safe drinking water were slashed. Then he invoked an executive privilege to take over cities, all of them majority black, by firing the mayors and city councils whom the local people had elected and installing his cronies to act as dictators over these cities. Their mission? Cut service to save money so he could give the rich even more breaks. That's where the idea of switching Flint water to river water came from to save 15 million. That's what they wanted to do. It was easy, suspend democracy, cut taxes for the rich, make the poor drink toxic water, and everybody's happy, except those who were poisoned in the process. All 100,000, 102,000 of them in the richest country in the world. And it says, sign the petition, arrest Governor Snyder. So 600,000 people have signed this petition, and the petition is to um, President Obama. Dear President Obama and Attorney General Lynch, we the undersigned call upon you to investigate and if warranted, arrest and prosecute the governor of Michigan, Rick Snyder, for violating the Environmental Protection Agency's regulation in cutting off clean drinking water to the city of Flint and making the citizens instead drink polluted water from Flint River for fraud and political corruption and for covering up the criminal actions of his administration. The children of Flint, already among the poorest in the United States, will now have to endure a life of pain, irreversible brain damage, and lower IQs because of Governor Snyder's actions. There is no way to totally reverse the effects of lead in a child's bloodstream. And at the very least, justice must be served. And other, elect other elected officials must be put on notice by the actions you take against the governor, that people's lives are more important than balancing a budget. We ask you, President Obama, to come to Flint and see firsthand the tragedy that has taken place, and then send in the CDC which is the, um, the, what is it, the Department of, the National Department of Health, the EPA, FEMA, and the Army Corps of em Engineers to repair the damage the governor of Michigan has done to Flint. And then, um, so you just sign and then you can share it. So I have signed this, please go and sign this. And this is on, yes, the Disease Center, thank you. Center for uh, Disease Control. So michaelmoore.com, 10 facts on Flint. And then on, yes, so please sign this. And, and we all need to start speaking up for the city of Flint, Michigan. I mean, it's it's been in the news. Nothing still has been done. Nothing has been done for them. And use the hashtag, let's fight racism. Let's use the hashtag, Fight racism, fight racism. So we're gonna combine the United Nations campaign, which is fight racism, and fight racism day is March 21st. So every day up until March 21st, we are going to be using the hashtag fight racism, fight racism. And so this is International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination on March 21st. And so this is living genocide, what they're doing. This is genocide. Fascism, that would be about right. Fight. 
I mean, we, we, we have to speak out for these children, for, for the children of Flint that will not be able to function. Oh, racism. Thank you. I didn't know what you were saying. So we have to speak up for the children of Flint. We do. I mean, in, in the, uh, the Durban Declaration and Program Action, it states that everybody is entitled to clean water, clean water.